Uh, anyway, but even with all that, six years into my business, I sort of hit the wall, which I'm sure many of you hit, where I'm going, do I really have to do this another day? Do I have to go get another client again? Do I have to meet payroll again? Do I have to hire another employee who rolls their eyes? <laughs> Couldn't take it anymore. And somebody came up to me and offered me to go run a network in the United States, Telemundo. And I got like stars in my eyes. I'm like, you know what? I just want to have an expense account on somebody else's dime and not work so hard. But thank God that I wasn't completely retarded. <laughs> and I said, let me keep my company going. Let me not give it up completely. Let me, let me elevate three of my employees, let them run it, and let me go run this other network on the side. And I left my own company, and I have to say, they did better the three years I was gone than when I was there. So that should tell you something. But I left to run this network, and it was the three worst years of my life. I got nine breast lumps. Um, I was sick the whole time. I had eye infections. Um, and, I, and I think because ultimately it goes back to, and this is, I'm, I'm saving you guys a lot of time to not have to go do this, because what happened is that I realized the same reason that Donald Trump was difficult, it's like I, I'm the kind of person who's a whistleblower in a corporation. I should have known that. I can't watch bad things happening to people and like just sit by and take it. So it was very, very difficult, difficult for me. Luckily, uh, I was able to sell that company to NBC and finally went back to my company and decided I'm going to make content for women that speaks to women and that's aspirational. And the first show I did was The Swan. And Nell and I have been working for years on doing a show called Ms. Mogul. And I'm doing a new show coming up called The New You for Women. Um, and all of that led me to going on The Apprentice. So I know we don't have a lot of time, so I want to make sure and tell you what I learned on The Apprentice. Um, even with all the difficulty of The Apprentice, the greatest, I could not pay Donald Trump for what I learned. Because I got there, and it was like going to a mid-life and a mid-career boot camp. I already feel like, you know, I went there thinking, well, I already am, I'm successful, and I've already made money, and I got game. Well, when I got there, I realized exactly what Simon was saying. He just put a word to it. It's like I became a worker bee. I was doing the how in the tasks. And I was blessed to have Gene Simmons as a team member. And Gene Simmons said to me, Nellie, you're the smartest person here next to me, of course. <laughs> but you work too hard. You don't work smart. He's like, pull out that Rolodex and start calling people. And he goes, your problem is you're a woman. And on top of that, you're a Latina. And so you're embarrassed to ask people to help you when it's a privilege to ask people to help you. And I thought to myself, he's kind of right. Like, I do become a worker bee and try to do everyone's job for them. And he's like, no. Then another task I did, you know, I, they asked me to do a TV commercial. I did a TV commercial and a website and a business plan. And, and Donald Trump says to me, go on. You over-delivered. He's like, you're not dealing with the owner of a company. You're dealing with an employee who's a, your client. They only asked you for X. Why did you give them X, Y, and Z? You're even making them feel bad. And I thought, he's right. How many times do I over-deliver and, like, have to be the smartest girl in the room, have to outdo myself, and really, like, they kind of resent it? Number three, when I'm doing that pedigree commercial, I said to the client, do you want a celebrity? No, we don't want a celebrity in the commercial. We just want it to be em emotional. So I don't give them a celebrity. Well, the other team puts a celebrity in. They get starstruck, and they pick the other, you know, the other commercial. And I thought, I've really, I, don't, I haven't really realized the power of celebrity in America, whether it's good or bad, and I agree with it. The fact of the matter is you put a celebrity in anything, even if it's a piece of junk, and people get all excited. So that was another thing I learned. Another thing I learned is that all the tools that I thought I had and that have served me thus far really weren't like kind of working for me. Like I realized that when I did the best work on the show is when I sort of approached everything like I knew nothing at all. And it really taught me that a lot of times in life you have to start from scratch as if you know nothing at all. With all that being said, what would I say to you ladies about what are the, what is, what are the number one, what's the number one thing I've learned in this trajectory as an entrepreneur. And I think for me, the hardest thing that, I, that I've had to really face, but that it freed me, is I realized that doing what we do and this path we've chosen, it's kind of like you have a little screw loose if you choose it, but there's nothing you can do about it because the screw's loose. <laughs> and 
I realize like part of part of my issue is that I'm always complaining about it. Like, oh, it's so hard. I'm always climbing a mountain. When is it going to get easier? Oh my God. I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't get easier. I've made millions of dollars. It still doesn't get easier. It's, I'm no, I'm not one iota. It's not one iota easier than when I was 25 years old because there's always another mountain to climb. So I have, I have felt much better once I like surrendered to the fact that this is a lifelong mission. It really is a lifelong mission, and you have to hear that. And the truth of the matter is, you, kind of, you guys kind of like all this drama. Let's face it, entrepreneurs like drama. So let's just own it. And the other thing I realized is that a lot of the things in life that I thought would make me happy really didn't. Like I always thought, well, if I found the perfect man, I'd be happy. The truth is, I have found the perfect man, and I adore him, but that alone doesn't fill you. Um, if I had a kid, it would make me happy. Well, I had a kid, and I realized it's my job to make him happy, not his job to make me happy. <laughs> and careers are a mixed bag. They come with ups and downs, and you, you sometimes feel like the pits, and sometimes you feel high. And this is a career of highs and lows, as Simon said. So what have I realized does make me happy? And I really did figure this out, and I think this might help you. The one thing nobody can take away from me, whether there's a world war, whether everything goes to hell, whether all my money's taken away from me, whether my business goes to pot, no one can take away from me the passion I have to grow every day. And I know every single one of you here can hear that because I know you've got that. There's no other choice for us. There's no other way to be. And so when you finally realize that that's the key to your happiness, is to come to seminars and listen to people speak. To every day, just grow a little bit. Even if you're in the most horrible moment of your career or your life, you go, there's a reason this is happening to me, and it will take me to a higher place. Because it has for me. Every single time I have been heartbroken, it's taken me to a higher place. I came up with the swan because I broke up with the father of my kid. And on a trip to Canyon Ranch, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. The other women must feel like I do. Let me do a show. And so. Even in your darkest moment, there's a reason for it. And once you finally surrender to that and stop thinking that maybe I'm crazy, maybe there's a better way to do this, maybe this idea that I have is really stupid, maybe everybody that tells me my idea is stupid is right. No, they're not. You just have to find a different detour to get to your idea. Your idea is right. Very few people on the planet have a clear vision and a clear direction and a clear passion for something that appears to be a screw loose.